I uh, grew up in Colorado, actually grew up in Boulder County. I was born in Longmont and uh, been in business my whole life. Uh, we live in Broomfield now and actually moved out there uh, from, uh, from Boulder because of uh, working at Corporate Express out in Broomfield at the time and uh, left uh, for a year and went to D.C. and worked at an organization called the Cato Institute. And when my wife was uh, pregnant with our first child, we decided to come back to Colorado and uh, came back to Broomfield because it's such a great community. And uh, now we're uh, living there. I've got uh, two incredible boys, Connor and Alexander. They're seven and three and uh, been in business most of my life. And I want to translate some of that experience into uh, some things going on here at the Capitol. Cool. What are some things that you hope to accomplish this year in the community? You know, there's a number of things, you know, when we, we look at what's going on in Colorado and, and, and clearly the job environment has been very difficult for folks in, in our community and every community. And uh, so certainly looking at opportunities to create a little bit more vibrant environment here in Colorado. And, and I think a big part of that is fiscal responsibility. The, the state, unfortunately, has passed four record budgets in a row despite tight times. And I don't know too many families that have been able to pass four record budgets in a row for themselves. I, I know that, you know, my family certainly hasn't been able to. So really, number one, looking at some fiscal responsibility things so that our government really does live in a, within a consistent budget and isn't constantly looking for more and more dollars. That in fact, we can try to leave those dollars in the pockets of the hardworking families and small businesses of our communities. And I have a special interest in education, and I have the, the tremendous honor of being vice chair of the Education Committee, and, and I hope to use that as an opportunity to uh, you know, basically look at uh, opportunities to empower parents and give parents uh, viable choices and opportunities as, as they look at the, looking for a quality education for their kids. What are your beliefs on um, the educational, you know, the budget cuts for education? Do you have any views on that? Sure, I mean, you know, in Colorado, we've had pretty consistent growth in education funding over the years. We've obviously had a couple of tough years here lately. I tend, because of where I'm at in my life and with my young kids, I certainly focus a lot on K through 12, but I'm certainly very aware that uh, higher education has also taken some hits. And I, I think, unfortunately, as we look at the budget here going forward, uh, you know, higher education may be a, a situation where they take some additional hits. And, and I think for us, what we've got to do first and foremost is ask, you know, especially in K through 12, ask, Yes, we want to have funding at an appropriate and desirable level, but we also have to be willing to ask ourselves questions. How do we get better outcomes? And, and I would like to see more cross-conversation between traditional public schools and charter schools and even private schools and ask ourselves, how can we get the best result? Because I think we all want the same thing. We want our kids to have an incredible education that is rigorous, has high standards, where we have high expectations for every kid, and that we set them up for success in the future. And I think we need to be asking ourselves, Let's talk about money, but let's make sure when we have those conversations, money's not always the first thing we talk about. Let's talk about performance. Let's talk about accountability. Let's talk about parental involvement and those kinds of things that regardless of the amount of money are essential to being successful. And how do you feel about immigration? What do you plan to do with immigration in the, in the region? Sure. Well, you know, immigration has is, is certainly gotten a lot of attention, certainly with what you've seen in Arizona, and there, there's been a little bit of attention here in, in Colorado. Uh, you know, when I look at any issue, I try to look at what is the fundamental principle that's involved. And, and for me, with immigration, the fundamental principle is, is two things. One, certainly national sovereignty. The United States has a right to have its borders and have its rules for crossing those borders, and I support that 100%. I also try to remember, too, that it's human beings that create value. If we want to have a strong, vital economy, we want to tap that ultimate resource, the human mind, as much as we can. And immigration clearly adds to our stock of human minds here in the United States. So I want us to make sure that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, if you will and that we have a balanced approach to immigration. And we also need to put our federal partners on notice that they have to have a rational policy at the border. And one of those things, of course, is a rational worker visa program. It puts the states in a very difficult position when we don't have a rational functioning policy at the federal level. Now, I did some research on immigration, actually, and most of the people I talked to said it was really difficult to get work visas. Like, they have to go through a very rigorous process. Is there any hope that maybe we can make that a little easier? You know, the challenge for us here in Colorado is that, to some degree, that's not a state-level issue. That is a federal issue. And there have been some very good proposals, I think, uh, with regard to how do we maybe set up agencies along the border, for example, that a company could contact those agencies and basically say we have a job. And if there's a job for someone and they pass a criminal background check and that kind of stuff, that they get a visa and they can come here and work if there's a demand for that labor.